Who would have thought that after being demoted to a dwarf planet, Pluto would become the most surprising planet in the solar system after all? Shocking images of Pluto show something you've never seen before. Pluto is alive, and the latest images may even prove the existence of a liquid ocean beneath the planet's surface. Ever since it was downgraded to a dwarf planet in 2006, Pluto had been off the researchers' radar. Too small, too uninteresting, too far away, and too dead. That was the opinion of the researchers, and they were wrong. NASA's New Horizons probe has now brought this to light. All the researchers who believed in Pluto are rejoicing at the fantastic new images. Others are shocked because they did not expect this. Many astronomers have still not come to terms with the decision to no longer regard Pluto as the ninth planet in the solar system. But how did it come about in the first place? When around a dozen other dwarf planets and planetoids were discovered in the Kuiper Belt behind Pluto, Scientists were faced with a problem. There may be many more small planets cavorting in the darkest areas of the solar system. In the not-too-distant future, we could know of dozens more mini-planets. And if we were to include them all in the ranks of the solar system's major planets, we would have a problem memorizing all the names. Consequently, a boundary was defined for what actually constitutes a planet, and Pluto didn't quite make the leap. It became a trans-Neptunian object, and one of probably a dozen dwarf planets. Many find this development a shame, and the new findings show that Pluto is anything but insignificant. Pluto is not much bigger than an asteroid. Did you know how big, or rather tiny, Pluto actually is? Most people still know that it was the smallest of all planets, but did you know that Pluto is not much bigger than the largest asteroids in the solar system? With a diameter of just 2,370 kilometers, Pluto is only half the size of Mercury. The closest planet to the Sun has a diameter of around 4,879 kilometers. The largest trans-Neptunian objects, Eris and Haumea, are almost as large as Pluto. Eris measures around 2,326 kilometers in diameter, and Haumea has a length of around 2,322 kilometers. It is precisely this similarity that has left astronomers in a quandary as to what is a planet and what is not. Eris and Haumea could certainly have been added to the ranks of planets. Then we would have had to memorize 11 planet names at school, but I'm sure we would have just about managed that. But now we come to another interesting difference in size, which not only gives astronomers food for thought. The largest asteroid in the solar system is Ceres. This almost circular and somewhat squat lump has a width of around 1,700 kilometers and a height of around 990 kilometers. This brings the asteroid very close to Pluto in terms of width. It is considered an asteroid due to its orbit around the Sun. Nevertheless, researchers are not sure whether this object, which is located in the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter, is actually something like a small planet. These pictures prove Pluto is alive. Want to see the discovery that has caused so much disquiet among scientists? This image was taken by the New Horizons probe in 2016. It shows a textured landscape of frozen surfaces and features that resemble glaciers. Now comes the real scoop. As the new James Webb Space Telescope recently turned its eyes on Pluto again and took new images of the surfaces. When comparing the images, it became apparent that the honeycomb-like structure on Pluto has changed significantly. What does this mean? Quite simply, the migration of the border areas and the glacier-like elevations shows that Pluto is alive beneath this formation. This is evidence of a core that is still active today and that there may be an ocean of liquid water in the depths of the planet. This discovery is surprising. If this is true, Pluto would also be a candidate for possible life outside the Earth. This interesting area is located on the eastern edge of the heart-shaped region known as Sputnik Planum. The structures on Pluto are not made of water ice, but of frozen nitrogen. The fact that the plates have shifted so significantly in just a few years indicates geological activity in the recent past. Such active surfaces have so far only been observed on Earth and Mars. This makes Pluto the third most active planet in the solar system. Who would have thought it? The cells you can see in the picture are 16 to 40 kilometers wide. 
depending on the solar radiation. The apparent size of the segments changes by up to 100 meters. Researchers initially thought that the differences in the images were due to optical illusions. However, detailed investigations have revealed that active dynamic processes are involved in the reshaping. So far, the researchers have drawn a picture according to which slow thermal convection of the frozen nitrogen formed this landscape. In thermal convection, heat is generated by active liquids and gases. These observations suggest that a reservoir containing liquids and gas is hidden beneath the structures. No one had expected this, and this unexpected activity is not some small, insignificant spot. This bubbling extends over at least 1,000 kilometers. When comparing the images from James Webb and New Horizons, it was noticeable that the structures have changed so significantly in just over five years that experts speak of a high level of geological activity on Pluto. What do the ice volcanoes reveal? A second shocker was the existence of ice volcanoes on Pluto, which may still be active today. This means that the dwarf planet must have a highly active internal heat source. Ice volcanoes are volcanoes that spew out a mixture of ice instead of magma or lava. So far, we have only seen these formations on the icy cold moons of Jupiter or Saturn. The ice mixtures that these volcanoes spew out are always volatile frozen substances such as nitrogen, methane, water, and mixtures of these gases and elements. Two elevations on Pluto that researchers have now identified as possible ice volcanoes are Wright Munts and Picard Munts near Pluto's South Pole. Typical depressions on the summits indicate volcanic craters and are further clues. Wright Munts is about 5 kilometers high and has a diameter of about 150 kilometers. Picard Munts is about 7 kilometers high and has a diameter of about 100 kilometers. This means that these mountains are not only presumed volcanoes, but also two of the highest elevations on the planet. The latest studies show that the ice volcanoes on Pluto were probably active until very recently, or still are. New Horizons took the first real picture of Pluto. Can you imagine that these were the only images we had of Pluto before New Horizons reached the planet in 2015? It's shocking that despite the highest technology, we only had a blurry image of the ninth planet of the solar system until 2015. If you've seen Pluto in school books or on posters, they were reconstructions from poor and blurry images like those from Hubble. Pluto is so extremely difficult to observe because the planet is far out in the solar system and almost in complete darkness. Can you imagine the excitement among astronomers when New Horizons sent back the first sharp images of Pluto? The planet finally got a face and Pluto surprised us with its heart. The structure, which has since become the dwarf planet's trademark, was already almost visible in Hubble's images. But thanks to New Horizons, the heart became clearly visible. Suddenly, the varied and almost colorful surface of the dwarf planet was also visible. Red, white, beige, and dark tones alternate on Pluto. The variety of colors not only looks pretty, it also tells researchers a lot about the processes and elements on Pluto's surface. New Horizons images were and are a true revelation for scientists and space fans. The heart is lined with hills that are between one and several kilometers high. The rugged Sputnik Planum is surrounded by mountains that rise up to 3,500 meters into the dark sky above Pluto. Planetary researchers called the western region of the heart Tombaugh Regio, named after the U.S. astronomer Clyde Tombaugh, who discovered Pluto in 1930. Researchers suspect that, unlike on Earth, these mountains are not made of rocks and stones. They are probably mountains of pure nitrogen ice. Many of these nitrogen mountains form groups or chains up to 20 kilometers long at the edge of the heart, some of which extend along the equator, forming structures that stretch around the planet. New Horizons flies through the heliosphere. When the New Horizons probe was launched on January 19, 2006, Pluto was still a completely normal planet. When the 700 million US dollar project arrived on July 14, 2015, the target was just a dwarf planet that had seemingly lost its significance. It took the probe a whole nine years, five months, and 25 days 
to reach its distant destination. On its journey, it used a swing-by maneuver on Jupiter to increase its speed and shorten the flight time. The probe carried out its overflights at a distance of only 12,600 kilometers. This proximity to Pluto was necessary in order to obtain accurate images of the planet in almost complete darkness. As Pluto does not have a very strong magnetic field, the distance was not a problem. The 2.1 meter long and 2.7 meter wide probe completed its mission with flying colors. All the instruments on board, including a telescope, a spectrometer, a camera, a radio wave meter, and a particle detector worked perfectly, and every dollar paid off with fantastic images. The images show the surface of the dwarf planet at a resolution of up to 440 meters per pixel. The detailed images and overall views of the planet come from image composites and reconstructions of many individual images. If you think New Horizons sent these perfect-looking images to Earth ready-made, then you are mistaken. The probe's data stream to Earth was extremely slow and could only ever send fragments of a huge puzzle. Those of you who know a bit about technology know that transmission speeds of 1 to 4 kilobits per second don't allow for big throws. The transmission of the collected data was more like an endless data spaghetti that was assembled by computers on Earth into the images we can now admire. In total, New Horizons collected several gigabytes of data on Pluto alone, which was slowly sent to Earth over the course of an entire year. Meanwhile, the probe continued to fly. New Horizons was not only designed to take a close look at Pluto. After the flyby of Pluto, the probe continued its mission in the Kuiper Belt. It discovered three new Pluto moons and passed the strange Kuiper Belt object, Arakoth, on January 1, 2019. On October 20th, 2023, New Horizons was 57.256 astronomical units, or 8.57 billion kilometers from the Sun. The probe is slowly flying through the Kuiper Belt to study other objects there, and will hopefully eventually reach the heliosphere at the outermost edge of the solar system. Subscribe now, because the best videos are yet to come.